Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, March 6, 2024 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Apple today released a surprise update for iOS and with that also for iPad OS. Unlike usual for Apple, we only got updates for this operating system, not for any others like Mac OS. And we also only got four vulnerabilities patched here, which is low for a somewhat major update. It's the update to 17. Point four from 17.3. So this is a feature update in addition to a small security update. Now I'm saying small because it only has four vulnerabilities being patched here. Two of the vulnerabilities, however, are already exploited. One of the vulnerabilities is also exploited on the older iOS 16, which also received an update today. These already exploited vulnerabilities are essentially privilege escalation vulnerabilities. So we only rated them as moderate so far. There's a third vulnerability that we rated as moderate. It only affects private browsing and uh, may make some tabs briefly visible. So basically, if you hand your iPad to another user, they may briefly see your private browsing tabs. The fourth vulnerability, also moderate, is another sort of privacy issue that basically just redacts some additional data from logs. Interestingly, there was also an update for iOS 15, but according to Apple, that update did not fix any security vulnerabilities. So not clear if this one vulnerability that was patched in iOS 16 just didn't affect iOS 15 or if a patch will come later. And in today's diary, I took a quick look at some of the logs we're having that indicate attacks or scans for uh, perimeter security devices. Of course, over the last few years, we had numerous critical vulnerabilities in perimeter security devices, in particular, also these enterprise security devices, like, uh, for example, uh, your Citrix, Ivanti, and uh, these various products, not just the uh, home routers, which, of course, always for a long, long time were sort of a prime target. What I particularly looked at is, well, how long it takes for a particular perimeter security device to be discovered and attacked just based on specific scans that attack specific devices. Looks like you got about a month here that probably vastly overestimates the time it takes for your device to be found because quite often a simple scan for an index page or something like this, uh, or maybe an SSH banner will give it away. Of course, uh, we can't really discover necessarily the intent of some of these requests, so they're not considered here. But even a month is pretty short in particular, given that attackers tend to continuously enumerate the internet for new devices, even ahead of a vulnerability being released. So once a vulnerability is being released, well, we have seen the past, usually within a couple of days, you do see exploits in particular targeting existing known devices that are vulnerable to this particular exploit. I mentioned yesterday the vulnerability in JetBrains Team City. As expected, Rapid7 provided all the details to exploit the vulnerability today. It's a trivial to exploit vulnerability. All it takes is, as so often lately, adding a couple weird characters to the URL and you're being given access to access controlled features. And Kaspersky came across an interesting new way to sort of do living off the land, in this case, to set up a network tunnel. The tool being used here is QEMU. QEMU is often installed on a Linux system. It's not that often used. It's a hypervisor, so you can run virtual machines in it. It's very capable, very useful if you want to do this kind of stuff. But in this particular case that Kaspersky ran into, which is an actual compromise, QEMU was just used to set up a simple network tunnel to a remote system. So 
they just abused, if you want to call it this way, this hypervisor to set up a virtual interface and then tunnel its traffic to a remote system. In this case, via port 443, likely to sort of fit in with HTTPS traffic. Pretty neat idea. And I kind of wonder if other hypervisors could be used in similar ways. Guimo is typically found on uh, Linux, but it can also be used on Mac OS as well as on Windows. And talking about virtualization products, VMware published updates for ESXi workstation and related uh, products. A total of four vulnerabilities are being patched here. VMware classifies this update as critical with CSS scores in the range of 7.1 to 9.3. Three of the vulnerabilities affect the USB controller code. The fourth one is uh, out of bounds right vulnerability in ESXi. They all have in common that they essentially allow an attacker who has control over a virtual machine full access to the host. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks for listening. If you're interested in learning more about how to defend against web application attacks, which we always talk about, well, I do have live classes coming up in London, England, and San Diego in the next couple of months, and also end of March, uh, VLive, an online class as part of our Orlando event. Uh, but yes, this one will be online only check the show notes or underneath the show notes. I usually have a list of upcoming classes. That's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.